school and Jack getting prepared for the uh, big Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, obviously, it's been a tough season for Quincy High, but there's been some bright spots on offense and on defense. Yeah, we've had it. It's been a tough year for us this year. The kids have hung in there really well. We've had, I think, uh, an extra amount of injuries that have really hurt us. And, and when you don't have a lot of depth to start, that can really be a factor in the season. Uh, we lost Chris Benito, uh, our top running back, in the fourth game of the year. And uh, that really kind of put a damper on our running game. But Mark Pozio and Ron Luisi uh, have filled in very nicely. Uh, we lost Steve Austin, uh, our quarterback, uh, uh, in the Weymouth game. So he's been out for two weeks, but we expect him back. And Donnie Perry also was out for the Newton game and, and most of the Brockton games. So we've had some key injuries, and we... Uh, you know, we have most of our players back, and we're looking to uh, to get back moving the football, and we want to get our running game down. We've, we've had good success this year with the passing game with Donnie Perry. Donnie's one of probably one of the best receivers around, and we've been able to get him the ball. So I think we want to work, we're working harder on our running game uh, to, to compensate our passing attack. All records aside, uh, the Thanksgiving Day football game between North and Quincy is uh, beaten to death with cliches about the biggest game of the year, and the seniors really get up for it, and the coaching staff really gets up for it. Now, last year, Quincy beat North. How, what kind of an effect does that have uh, psychologically? Well, it, it's always a positive effect. I mean, this is, you know, to our kids especially this year, this is the season. Uh, North is in the same. They've won two games, but, I mean, it really pretty much comes down to this game, and uh, this is the game they'll remember. Two, three years from now, they won't remember what they did against Everett or Revere or, or anything like that. They remember every year they come back to the stadium, you know, they know, they think about how they did, how they did individually and how, individually and how their team did. So it's still the game for these kids, and uh, I think for both teams, this is a whole new season, and uh, a win here uh, today is, uh, is, it'll make the year, believe me. In the, uh, in the old days, uh, the kids from the north end of the city went to north, of course, and the kids from the, the other end of the city went to Quincy, and there was a real intense rivalry because of that. Nowadays, kids can go to either high school. Does that diminish the rivalry at all? Oh, I don't think so. I, don't th I know they don't go there for, for sports. Uh, there are options with the open enrollment strictly academic. I don't think we're not in a system where, where a kid gets to choose what team, teams he wants to play for. That's, that's not what the open enrollment is. Uh, that's strictly academic, and believe me, the rivalry is still, as you can see out here behind us, as intense as, uh, as I think it ever has been. Okay, thanks, Jack. And behind us is the uh, JV football game. Uh, every year, the JVs play a little uh, pre-Thanksgiving Day football game, and this is about as intense as you'll see any football get. Uh, Jack, we're going to be talking to your coaches about what the offense and what the defense is going to be doing. And, uh, I hope they don't tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they, I'm sure they got some things up their sleeves, too. Could you tell us uh, who the coaches are just before we talk to them and, uh, and what kinds of things they've been doing? Sure. We have a lot of uh, new coaches this year. Mitch Finnegan uh, is, is running, uh, handling the JVs out here. Now, Mitch was our freshman coach last year, doing a fine job. Uh, John Taglieri is new this year. He's the defensive coordinator. He's done a fine job for us. Uh, two boys that played for me uh, when I coached at North Quincy uh, a few years ago, Kevin Kelly and, and Jim Kennedy, are down here helping, um, working very well with the defense and the JVs uh, also. Peter Chrism, another North Quincy name, uh, is down working with our offensive line and doing a fine job. And I have three freshman coaches this year. Um, Mark, uh, Fran Gaudiano is the head freshman coach, and he's being helped out by two uh, former Quincy uh, players, Mark Regini and Chris Dracchio. So we have a lot of young kids. We really, we knew they needed a lot of drill, and, and I think some of these coaches are volunteering, some of them are splitting checks, but I, I'm really happy with the job they've done, and, and it's made our job, my job a lot easier. They've done a really great job. Okay, well, good luck, and we're going to meet those coaches and the Quincy High School players right now. We're here with some of the members of the Quincy High School coaching staff, uh, the staff that will be assisting Jack Raymer during the game. And, uh, gentlemen, if you could uh, introduce yourselves and tell us what you're going to be doing. Yeah, I'm Peter Chrism, coach of the offensive line. Jim Kennedy, defensive backfield coach. Kevin Kelly, linebackers and defensive backs. John Tagley, defensive coordinator. John, uh, let me uh, start with you first. Uh, what is the defense uh, going to look for against North? Well, our defense, we're, we're definitely going to be attacking. We're not going to be uh, sitting back waiting for them. We're looking for the little wing tee that they run to. And uh, I suppose, Kevin, uh, with the linebackers and defensive backs, uh, you're also going to be looking for, for the pass or, or uh, maybe a screen play or something set up like that. But, of course, you've got to watch for Ted Shonis also. Right. Their, uh, their wing tee offense is also in an eye set, and they're very deceptive. And they can put Shonis out for a pass. And they can also uh, run a pass where they dive the fullback and put him into the flat. So we're looking for that. Now, Kevin, you're up in the booth with uh, Jim. 
What are the kinds of things that you do up uh, in the booth, Jim, as far as uh, helping the coaching staff? Well, basically we look for openings, um, an offensive play that might work because of a certain defensive formation they're running or a weakness somewhere in the defense that we think we can exploit and send it down the sidelines and they give it a run. i got to ask both of you guys, you're probably going to be looking for that uh, hook and lateral pass, right? Yeah, we go, um, we're going to be going to man-to-man -man coverage some of the time, so we have to have our linebackers pick up the backs out of the backfield to prevent anything like that. Okay, on, uh, on offense, uh, what are the presidents uh, going to come out with, Peter? On offense, we're going to be uh, basically uh, winging it or what? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't decided. We yet. haven't decided on our offensive game plan yet. yet. Okay, you do have Steve Austin back. He was injured, and you also have Chris Venito back. Uh, so that opens it up a little bit more for you as far as the last couple of weeks anyway. Right. Well, we're glad to have those two back. They'll help our off offense move anyway. And one thing we've noticed this year watching Quincy is uh, the Austin to Perry combination has been clicking. Uh, you're probably going to look to go to Don Perry a little bit, I would think. Yeah, we're going to go to uh, Donnie. Donnie's been a fine receiver for us this year, but uh, also we're going to need a lot of help from our uh, offensive line and uh, from our backs to make our offense move. Do you think the offensive line uh, will be able to knock Quincy off the line? Uh, I'm, I haven't been able to sort of size up both lines yet, but uh, you guys look like you have some big players. We have some big players. We've had a lot of injuries this year on our offensive line. We've had a lot of new people in there that's never really played too much in there. Uh, we finally got the group back together again, so hopefully we're expecting some big things out of them on Thursday. Okay, and uh, one last comment. The defense uh, uh, has, has had its problems uh, this year, John, uh, especially the defensive backfield, and, you know, not to malign them or anything, but uh, obviously you've, you've got to get these kids motivated and, and make them believe that they can stop any play. How, you, how do you do that? Well, this team knows we can stop any team. We played Brockton, and we shut down Brockton. They only scored two touchdowns against us in the first half against the defense, and uh, we know we can play with North Quincy. We're going to come up with a win. Okay, and even though we don't have anybody here to talk about special teams, Kevin, maybe you can uh, comment on what the special teams uh, will be doing. All right, well, basically on uh, kickoff coverage, we're just looking for uh, trick plays, reverses, anything like that, because sometimes on Thanksgiving, uh, the coaches like to come out with a different twist or something like that. You know, to get the game sparked, because it is, you know, like a bowl game for these two teams. So we're working tight on our coverage, and especially on our... You know, a kickoff team, like I said, but we're just looking out for the trick play. Reverse or anything like that. Showing us can break a reverse, you know, and go all the way. Uh, they had a freshman or a sophomore, I think, who did that against Cambridge. He returned the kickoff. So we have to look for that kind of a thing, a trick play. Okay, well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and uh, good luck uh, during the game. And now it's time to meet the Quincy Presidents. Don Perry, wide receiver, number 17. And what's the number? Oh, okay. Ron Luisi, number 33, halfback. Kevin Jolly, number 32, defensive end. Mark Pozio, number 47, halfback. Chris Benito, 27, halfback. Dave Murphy, 40, linebacker. Don Anderson, number 85, cornerback. Sergio Nez, number 3, safety. Michael Corner, number 25, defensive back. Tony Venturelli, number 21, defensive back kicker. Larry Tagler, number 12, outside linebacker. Paul Monifle, number 63, defensive tackle. John Heath, number 58, center. Paul Lally, number 70, offensive guard. Ken Southwick, number 24, nose guard. Dave Schofield, 75, tackle. So now we've heard from the coaches and we've met the Quincy High School players. And you know, this is the biggest game of the year, no doubt about it. Even though Quincy hasn't won a game, uh, as far as the seniors are concerned, this is their high school football career on the line right here. And they'd love nothing better than to beat the Red Raiders. For the coaches, they prepare for this uh, as hard as any game all year and uh, they very badly want to beat the Red Raiders as they did last year and get their first win of the season. It's a good chance to take a look at some of the players who will be playing next year and also a good chance to get those seniors in the game and uh, let them finish out their high school football career. 
And uh, North Quincy, well, we're going to take a look at uh, what they're going to do and how they're going to prepare for the Quincy High School Presidents. And uh, despite the fact the Presidents are 0-9, they're up for this game. Well, we've talked to the Quincy coaching staff and Quincy coach Jack Raymer now. We get a chance to talk to North Quincy coach Ken McPhee. And Ken, um, all the cliches have been used up, but still, this is, uh, this is the big one. Absolutely. You can go 0-9, you can go 2-7, uh, and, and you can salvage a season with this one game. This is the, uh, the game for the bragging rights for the city of Quincy. This is a city championship. And uh, if we can come out of this game a victor, uh, these kids will be able to walk around with their heads up. And uh, if they don't, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Last year, of course, uh, Quincy won the big game, and uh, I guess for them, uh, that's an incentive to play well on Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, but what about the North kids? That uh, must be a motivating factor to say, hey, I was here last year, and as a senior, I really want to win this game. I think that that's uh, absolutely true. Um, our kids are, are looking forward to this game. You know, they were involved in a very tough loss last year. Um, that game could have gone either way. Uh, we knew when we went into the game, you know, I've been involved in these things for almost 20 years now as a player and as a coach, and, and I've seen too many times where the, the, the team that is favored has gone into the game and come out the loser. I don't think our kids are going to take anything for granted this week. I think they're ready to go, and I, I really believe that we'll be ready to, to play on, on Turkey Day. Okay, and is there one thing that you can uh, offer us as far as uh, what you've been doing to prepare for this game uh, overall with, uh, with the kids? Well, <laughs> with Jack, it's tough because Jack does so many things that are... Uh, I don't want to say off the wallish, but he does so many great things with his personality. He takes advantage of everybody, and um, he knows that we're going to go out and try to stop Perry, so I'm sure he's going to have someone in the wings trying to beat us with that other person. Uh, what we've tried to do defensively is try to come out and take care of any of his options that he has open to him, and defensively try to block the things that he does well on defense. And uh, we're going to stay right to our regular game plan. I don't think that you can put anything in that's, that's very different because you uh, tend not to do that thing well. Uh, we have an offense, we're going to run our offense. And uh, we have our defense, and I think we can run our defense against them. So those are the things we're trying to do, just hone in on the things that we do well and, and do them better. And I know you'll probably have a surprise or two in store for, for Jack along the way. <laughs> I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm pleading the fifth on that one. <laughs> okay, well, good luck, uh, Coach McPhee. And now it's time to meet the North Quincy coaching staff. And now we're up here at the north end of the city to meet the North Quincy High School coaching staff. And gentlemen, if you could introduce yourselves and tell us uh, what your functions are. Ted Sadowski, I uh, coach the sophomores and I help with the JVs and I do all the scouting. Um, okay. Kevin Carbon, offensive coordinator. I'm, uh, Mark Mulvaney, I'm the defensive coordinator. Pete Sawyer, good humor man. <laughs> Pete, let me uh, start with you first. You've seen a lot of these North Quincy Quincy games, and uh, records mean absolutely nothing when you get down to Thursday morning. Correct. There's one thing I'm looking for, especially in this game. It's a win. <laughs> what uh, What are you going to have to do to win today, Pete? Just play the uh, the kind of football that they're capable of. of. Okay, and that means defense, I'm sure, uh, Mark. So what are the kinds of things that uh, you look for Quincy to do that you're going to have to play defense against? Well, defensively, we figure they're going to they're throw the ball on us. You know, uh, Perry is a, a very, very quick individual, and, uh, you know, he's an excellent athlete. And so we figure we need, a, we need to stop him today. And uh, we believe we can stop them on the run, okay? So we need to stop them, stop their passing game, and we can contain them inside, and we, we will pull out the, the win that we want today. And you haven't seen Chris Benito play for Quincy in a couple of weeks. He's going to be a big uh, offensive threat for them, too. Yeah, you know, but, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, I figure that we can, we can handle the things inside, all right? And we, we can shut off their, their passing game, uh, even though he'll be out there and he's an added threat to, to their game and an asset, uh, we can handle it. Okay, let's talk about some of the defensive players. You, North Quincy is uh, famous for having a good defensive line. You've got some big guys in there. Yeah, well, you know, we've got uh, you know, Stevie Miller, and we've got John Ainsley. Uh, John's nose, and, uh, you know, we have uh, Steve's a tackle, and Kenny Kemp is also another tackle. And uh, we have some real good speed there, you know, with that. Um, you know, we also have another senior, uh, Donnie Clancy, who's uh, very, very quick and very strong. We're, we're strong up front. That's what we think is an asset to us right now. Okay, and the other side of the coin, of course, is the offensive set, and everybody's talking about Ted Shonis, and what makes Ted so good, I'm sure it's got to be not only his athletic ability, but also the offensive line. Yeah, we have a pretty good offensive line this year. Uh, Ted makes a lot of yardage on his own, but uh, somebody has to make the holes for him to get through the line, first of all. Uh, Ed Bagley, Kevin McCarthy, Kenny Kemp, uh, 
Mike Hugo and Matt McNamara are having a super job all year, making some holes for Teddy. Don't take anything away from Teddy, he's a super back. We have three good backs, we feel. Uh, uh, Gary McNamara, excuse me, the fullback, uh, should be running a lot inside. We usually have a great fullback. Uh, Thanksgiving usually runs very well against Quincy, we don't know why. Uh, I look for him to run, run pretty well, because we're expecting him to, to, uh, to uh, watch Teddy showing us all game. So hopefully it'll open up for Gary Mack. Everybody uh, jokes about it, but when it comes down to the big play, the hook and lateral works all the time. How the heck do you guys do that? I don't know. Everybody in the whole world knows the play. Uh, it's just hopefully we pick it at the right time to, to throw it. Uh, Teddy just, you know, uh, happens. The uh, wide receiver caught the ball and pitched it to Teddy. It was a super play. We've, we've been practicing it all year. It's, you know, it works maybe once a season. Maybe it'll work again this week. We don't know. Okay, and of course you want to stay penalty free on offense too, which you've been doing for the most part this year. Yeah, we we, we try to stay away from the stupid mistakes. Uh, you know, we these kids are all fired up to play Quincy, and they're uh, a little excited. They might do a little go offside a few times, but that's just aggressiveness. We don't mind aggressiveness. Okay, and uh, Coach Sadowski, uh, you've seen some of the younger players, and of course you've been doing some scouting. Uh, what, is, what does this game mean? Uh, well, we know what it means to the seniors, but what about the younger players that maybe the first time playing in a Thanksgiving Day game? Well, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is a big day, but uh, earlier we have Brockton, and maybe that's an example of the kind of thing the kids look forward to. Colombo, the Brockton quarterback's coming back, and uh, the juniors have already said we're looking for him for next year. Well, they're looking for uh, Parry, mainly, uh, this next meeting. But the younger kids are really all fired up. In the JV game uh, last Saturday, oh, I, uh, they were so fired up that they just went out and did a great job on Quincy. And it's nice to have two starters on the varsity, the freshmen, and uh, a couple other freshmen that look like they'll be coming up pretty good. And sophomores and juniors, uh, we're, we're, I'd say loaded. You know, you hate to make predictions for next year, but right now I'd say we do look fine for the future. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and uh, the North Quincy coaching staff. Good luck today against Quincy. And now it's time to meet the North Quincy Red Raiders. Rob Bradley, senior co-captain, cornerback. Steve Miller, senior co-captain, two-way tackle. Ted Jonas, co-captain, senior tailback. Chris Malloy, senior, defensive tackle, fullback. Mark Bilton, offensive end, defensive back. Ryan Flukes, defensive end. Donald Clancy, defensive nose guard senior. Mike Hugo, offensive tackle. Sean Shales, wide receiver. Scott Williams, defensive tackle. Mike Bose, center. Leo LeMay, wing back. Ed Bagley, offensive right guard. Kim McCarthy, offensive left guard. Mark Scanlon, kicker. And Phil Kapitanakis, right D back. Gary McNamara, fullback. Chuck McGrill, senior tight end. Kevin McCluskey, safety. Mike Ains, outside linebacker. <laughs> Ken Kemp, center defensive tackle. Mike Cicerone, wide receiver. Chris Gray, quarterback. <laughs> and then welcome to the. 53rd annual football game between North Quincy and Quincy. Roger Holman, Jim Rendell, and Kevin Cahill on hand to bring you all the play-by-play -play action. As you well know, Thanksgiving Day, rainy, stormy day, and we expect the conditions to continue throughout this Thanksgiving Day Classic. We're standing by, both teams, on a rebuilding schedule this year, but coming along as the season has progressed. North Quincy in the runway, about ready to enter the field. You'll hear a roar. The, obviously, the crowd has kept down somewhat because of Mother Nature, but we're still expecting a great atmosphere here for football. The balloons off to our right obviously represent North Quincy. They'll be the first ones to uh, take the field here at Veterans Stadium. Wind, not too much of a factor because the rain coming straight down, but been pouring uh, consistently here since about 8 o'clock this morning. Jimmy, the conditions in the field obviously going to have a great factor on uh, this morning's broadcast. Uh, exactly, Roger. That's that's the big story right now. Certainly, uh, both teams coming in pretty equal. It should be a, a equal game, but this weather is going to decide the outcome. I uh, 
it's been consistent like you say it's it's progressively getting worse uh, the rain is coming harder and harder and uh, the field I was down there about a 15 20 minutes ago it is atrocious um, slippery wet cold um, nothing good about the field whatsoever it's going to hold back both North Quincy and Quincy of course North Quincy with uh, Ted Jonas in the backfield good quick feet hard running back just going to have difficulty running on this field and of course Quincy with their connection of uh, Austin to Perry is going to be limited by the weather too so both teams on offense are going to be hurt definitely by the weather. Kevin your comments on uh, this morning's game. Well, Roger, as you know, uh, I'll be down on the field now. I was down there with Jim a little while ago. The uh, field is a quagmire. There's the North Quincy Red Raiders coming out. The field is a quagmire, and it's a freezing rain, uh, a freezing rain, not, not a downpour type. So there are some sections of the field which aren't too bad, but the middle of the field is going to be awful. I think that uh, the team that wins it on the ground is going to win the ball game. Great crossover. Well, the hoop is up for North uh, for Quincy, and they're gathering in the runway, and soon they'll be taking the field. The hoop has seen better days, Jimmy. The play is certainly coming up, fired up, Roger. I think the only people here they come. The red. Obviously, uh, the weather having a, a real effect on the attendance as far as the crowd goes. Uh, um, Thanksgiving Day game is generally the big one for the, everybody in the city of Quincy, and it's a, it's a big social event for the people that show up, and uh, there's just an awful lot of them not here today because of the weather. Now well, the uh, Quincy marching band off to our left. North Quincy to our right. They'll march onto the field. We'll play the national anthem. Right now, introductions of the players. We'll be running down the lineups for you at quarterback. Let's go over North Quincy. Chris Gray, number 13. At left halfback will be Ted Shonis. Right halfback, Leo LeMay. And at fullback, Gary McNamara. And as Coach McPhee has said, they expect McNamara, especially even more with the weather conditions, to be a big factor today with Quincy probably keen on Shonis. At right guard will be Ed Bagley, right tackle Steve Miller, center Ken Kemp, left guard Kevin McCarthy, left tackle Matt McNamara, and at right end Mark Bilton. Let's give the Quincy lineup for you at nose guard Ken Southwick, at left tackle Paul Mon Monifo, at right tackle Mike Eastwick, at right guard is uh, Kevin Jolly. Nose guard is uh, Southwick, as we've said. The defensive backs, Larry Taglieri, Mike O'Connor. Linebackers are Dave Murphy and Steve Pekarski. As you can see, North Quincy being introduced down on the field. They're in their red, black, and white uniforms. Jimmy, do you think the uh, offenses uh, will be, uh, their game plans will be changed because of the weather? Uh, no question about it, Roger. Uh, I think, especially in Quincy's side, where Quincy's big connection has been a big offensive threat and it's been clicking, is Austin to Perry. Um, it's going to be tough to throw the ball, tough to catch the ball. Um, Perry, a great athlete with a lot of speed, a lot of moves, is going to have to be somewhat restricted. And on the other side of the football, Jonas, with his speed and his cutting ability, the good thing about Jonas as a running back is his ability to read his blockers and to cut inside and out depending on how the block forms. He's just not going to have that ability to make the quick cuts. So both sides offensively are going to be hurt. So I think what both coaches will do is both coaches are going to send the defense after him and hope to force... Uh, have, have their defenses force the uh, opposing offense into mistakes, and that's what's going to, I think, a uh, big fumble somewhere along the way, a big fumble recovery deep in somebody's territory is going to be the key to the game. Jim, uh, I have a question in regards to uh, tactical effort. 
many times in a game situation like this, they say you can't pass and uh, you have to go to a ground game. To me, it would seem more of an advantage for a passing team for the fact that the end knows where he's going to go and there's a much better chance of the defensive back uh, slipping down and him being wide open. Any merit to that uh, type of play? Oh, yeah, that's true. I wouldn't say they can't pass because you know that Austin's going to throw the ball. You know he's going to hit Perry a couple of times. They're gonna, still going to attempt it. It doesn't matter what the weather is because he's, a, he's got a great arm and Perry's a great receiver. So you know that both teams are going to throw the ball and both teams are still going to continue what they do best and they're, they're going to try and fight the weather. But it is going to make it more difficult for him and there's going to be a much better chance of, of the interceptions um, also, on the other hand, uh, the, the chance of the big score because the defensive backs could slip and fall down. But it's going to hinder the play on both sides, uh, offensively and defensively, just to limit them. They're going to be a step slower. And I think, actually, uh, once the players get used to the conditions, they're not even going to realize it's going to be that bad, Roger. They're so pumped up. Um, it's Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, half of them probably don't even know it's raining right now. All they're thinking about is their assignments and what they've got to do. Well, this is it. This is what they've been playing for all year. This is the big enchilada. North Quincy band strikes up off to our right. And they'll be marching on the field. As you can see, the lineup for North Quincy. Cicerone will be at left end. Puglio at left tackle. McCarthy left guard. Kemp is the center. Bagley at right guard. Miller right tackle. Bilton's the right end. Chris Gray will be a quarterback. Ted Shonis will be interested to see how much he'll be affected by the weather will be in the backfield along with McNamara and Leo LeMay. Watch for McNamara too today, Roger. I think the weather conditions are good for him. North Quincy has a tradition of having a fullback, have a good day, Thanksgiving Day game, and uh, I think North Quincy is going to try and use McNamara an awful lot. If I was to give the edge to uh, one of the teams right now, Roger, I'd probably, because of the weather conditions, have to go with North Quincy. North Quincy's offensive line in particular has been improving steadily over the course of the year. And um, once they get a feel, they, they've had some good holes, they've done some good blocking, some good team um, concepts as far as their offensive line, and uh, they could have a slight advantage. And uh, so North Quincy's running game um, could move the ball w quite well. But again, it's Turkey Day game, Thanksgiving Day game, and um, this is Quincy's whole season, so they're going to come fired up, so you really can't give an advantage to either one of them. Marching onto the field, off to our left, the Quincy president, marching band. And when they get to midfield, we'll have the national anthem. Kevin Cahill will be giving us continual reports, uh, at least uh, electronically willing if he's able to get those uh, reports off down on the field throughout uh, the game with uh, many of the players, coaches, alumni, fans, relatives. Kevin will be all over the field. So we'll be looking forward to those reports throughout the morning and early afternoon. As we approach game time too, Roger, the crowd is increasing, obviously. Everybody waiting for the last minute to come out of their warm homes and into their, uh, out of their beds to, uh, to come to the game. But there is still a steady flow of, uh, of fans coming in, which is good to see uh, braving these weather conditions. Jimmy, and I think uh, the weather is lightening up a little bit. I think the rain has been reduced now to a downpour. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It's, it's still raining, and it's raining heavily, but it is improving. So hopefully, uh, maybe game time, if we could get a break, um, it certainly would help the players on the field. Everybody in the stadium right now would certainly be very happy to see a little bit of a, a break in the weather. In a game like this, I think it would be uh, apropos if they change the ruling uh, as far as a player being down until he's touched instead of just the knee. Because you're going to have a lot of those, which is going to take away from the game. Stand by now for our national anthem.
And we're just moments away from the opening kickoff here on this Thanksgiving morning. There go the North Quincy Balloons in one big clump. And as if you can see the balloons, the wind will have an effect. It's certainly on the, on the kicking game when they get the ball up in the air. Now the bands are leaving the field, as are the balloons. The field is a mess. There's no other way to describe it. You can see it uh, uh, from the 35 to about the 45-yard line is, is nothing but uh, wet mud now. And after uh, a kickoff and a couple of uh, plays, you're going to have nothing uh, but mud out there. North Quincy is going to kick off. They'll defend the goal to our left. Quincy will be receiving the ball. Back deep, uh, Don Perry and Joe Anello for Quincy. Teeing the ball up, Don Clancy for North Quincy Red Raiders. And we're moments away from the opening kickoff of this Thanksgiving Day Classic. We're underway, short, fat kick. Coming down, dropped, and fumbled. Picked up by Pekarski, not much of a gain. Ball is short of the 35-yard line. Quincy will take over first and 10 at their own 34-yard line. And both teams full of emotion. They came down off the kickoff and a uh, lot of good pops out there for the first play of the game. It's, obviously, it's a turkey day game, Thanksgiving day game. The players are ready to go. All right, let's run down the offenses for you. Left hand will be Steve Gardner. Tackle is Craig. Left guard, Lally. Heath is the center. Right guard, Smith. Right tackle is Savage. Right end, Perry. And the quarterback, Steve Austin. Left halfback will be Anello. Benito is at uh, right half. And Porzio is the fullback. Full house set behind Austin. Handoff, last back through. Good gain on the play of about eight yards. Nice blocking up front by the Presidents in the first play of the game. Running a nice trap and uh, the Presidents came out firing. And now a gain of about seven yards. It'll bring up a second and three. Full out set again behind Austin. Anello is the deep back. Fake handoff, back to passes Austin. Look and long for Perry. Perry falls down. And it's intercepted and dropped. In and out of the hands of number five, Angelo Capitanakis. Quincy not afraid of the elements, throwing the ball, second play of the game and going for the marble. Again, Don Perry slipped and fell again. He saw the pass was going to be a little bit short, tried to stop, slipped, fell down, and uh, having difficulty already. A couple of receivers coming out of the backfield very, very gingerly so they wouldn't lose their footing. But the president's not afraid of it. They're not going to let the weather affect him, and they're going to go for it. I'll tell you, if Austin could have got that out in front, uh, uh, Perry was beyond the defense. And that's when he fell down. That's when he uh, tried to stop to come back for the ball. It sets up third and three. Full house set again behind Austin. In motion comes Moody. Flip is to Inello. No gain on the play. Great play by Stevie Miller that time. Broke through the line untouched. Tackled, uh, made the tackle in the backfield. Stevie Miller obviously one of the captains fired up and making a great play for North Quincy. Loss of two, it'll bring up fourth and about five. Oh. Quincy shifts. Pitch back to Perry, and it's a line drive punt. Hits on the 40. Right into the arms of McNamara. He's at the 40. And gets up to about the 42. Brought down by Luisi at the 42-yard line. Nice hit by Luisi, too. 
excellent hit. Put his nose right in there and uh, made the ball carry. I know that he was present on the field that time. Nice hit by Luisi. Gray brings his team out, I set. In motion comes LeMay. Hand off to Jonas. Dives forward close to the 44 yard line. Nice tackle there by Steve Pekoski. A Pekoski, a familiar name to all Quincy High School football fans over the years. There's the North Quincy offense for you. We'll set it for you in a moment. Shona shifts back into a, a deep eye. In motion goes LeMay. Moving along the line. Flags are down. Hand off to McNamara. Not much gain on the play. Let's set the offense for you. At left end is Gary McNamara. Left tackle, Ken Kemp. Right tackle, Scott Williams. Right end, Ryan Flukes. The nose guard is John Ainsley. That's not the Quincy not surprisingly uh, putting the blitz on that time and uh, Larry Tagliere a little bit too quick to get over the line of scrimmage and uh, they were off sides but Quincy's going to be coming at North Quincy eight man front for, North, for Quincy I set behind Gray hand off Shaughness he's got the ball into the secondary across midfield down to the 45 yard line. Good gain. First down, North Quincy. Gary McNamara on a great block, opening that hole that time, leading the way. Met the linebacker from Quincy head on, and uh, big collision down there. They're going to like to see that in the game films afterwards. Gary McNamara on a great block. Pick up a 12 yards on the play. First down for North. I set again behind Gray. And off Shonis, trying to turn it to the outside. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets the ball down to about the 45-yard line. Looked like a great defensive play being turned in by number 81, Frank Calabro, but Shonis, with driving legs, just got away from him and slipped him down to the 45-yard line. Gain a four on the play. It'll bring up a second and six. Gain the four where there should have been a loss of one, and it was strictly because of the leg drive of Ted Shonis. Kept those legs pumping after he was hit like any great back would do and then picked up the four yards. McDougal comes to the right. LeMay is a slot right. Now the back shift behind Gray. Pitch right. Out, out to Shonis trying to turn the corner. Gets by one tackle. 30, 35, 30 and knocked out of bounds. Shonis inside the 30 yard line to use the speed to turn that corner. 18-yard pickup on the play by Shonis. Quincy's going to have to learn very quickly. The last two plays, Quincy tried to tackle Shonis. You cannot tackle him. You've got to hit him. You can't just reach out and grab him. You've got to have to stick him to stop him. And Quincy's going to learn that the hard way if they don't learn it, you know, if they don't do it in a hurry. They're going to have to hit him hard. Cicerone to the left. LeMay, slot right. Backs are an eye behind Gray. Barking out signals. Handoff and a comebacker to McNamara. He breaks. Uh, check that. That's LeMay. He a couple of hits. Got away from a couple of hits, but finally went down. Good stick on the play. Slow the play up was Mike Eastwick. And it was a good stick, and the, the knockback didn't go down. I don't know what Quincy's going to have to do, although they did stop him that play for a shot loss on a real good stick. And that's what Quincy's going to have to do on defense. They're going to have to have a couple more hits like that in order to stop North. We'll call it a three-yard loss. Brings up a second and 13 for the Red Raiders. McDougal is wide left. Back split. Handoff right off the middle of McNamara. Just tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but dives forward for a gain of five or six yards. We'll call it a gain of five. It'll bring up a second down. Uh, check the third down. And about eight. Little misdirection play with uh, excellent blocks there by Kenny Kemp and uh, and uh, McNamara again in the in the interior line. Excellent blocking for North Quincy. 
North comes out, Cicerone, wide right. LeMay now split to the left. Shotgun formation. Barking out signals is gray. There's a snap. One-on-one -on -one coverage for Cicerone. And underneath back, it is complete to McNamara. And the only man saving him from a touchdown was number 25, Mike O'Connor, who made a great move to get away from Cicerone, who threw a block on him, and then come up and make the tackle because there was nothing for about 20 yards except pay dirt for McNamara. Nice play by North Quincy. They knew exactly what they were going to do. They set it up well against Quincy's defense, and they got the first down. And again, a great play by the Quincy defensive back to stop a touchdown. McNamara all by himself out there. 12-yard pass completion from Gray to McNamara, and the drive continues. And, Jimmy, very important uh, that these first drives that uh, their offense is score because obviously the conditions of the field are going to do nothing but deteriorate. Exactly right. I formation set up for Gray. Gets a snap. Hand off. Shonis slides, dives, trying to get down to the 10-yard line, and there he's stacked up by two or three tacklers. Perry... And Scanlon get up off the bottom of the pile. Gain a four on the play. Again, big hole in that uh, line for uh, North Quincy. Excellent blocking. That time it was Eddie Bagley. Quincy and calls the timeout. Mark Bilton and Eddie Bagley. Excellent blocking on that play. Four minutes, 58 seconds remaining, first quarter, Thanksgiving Day Classic between the Red Raiders and the Presidents. The Presidents' uh, defense, Roger, needs a big play man now. They need somebody to come up and stop this momentum that North Quincy has. They're going to have to have a big, big hit that cause a fumble or a loss. Uh, North Quincy moving the ball consistently. Their offensive line blocking well, getting some big holes. Then mixing the ball up. Quincy's going to have to have a big play defender right now. Well, Jackie Raymer feels exactly the way you do. He called the timeout to get his defense set. Of course, that gives North Quincy a chance to uh, put in a new wrinkle as well. Gray's been talking to McVie. Second down, seven. LeMay goes to the left. Bilton's in tight to the right. Backs are split behind Gray. Hand off. McNamara, 10, 5, down to the 5-yard line. 7-yard gain for McNamara. Brought down on the play by Kevin Jolly. North Quincy certainly has found something they like over in that right side there. Straight up blocking. Um, Kevin McCarthy, Eddie Bagley, Kenny Kemp blowing the holes out in that line. First and ten, and first and goal to goal at the five. LeMay is in a slot right. High formation set up behind Gray. Handoff is to Shonis. Dice forward, keeps his legs chugging. Down close, and evidently not, not in. It's going to be just short. About a uh, foot and a half. That's LeMay. Big play that time by uh, Teddy Jonas again. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Kept that leg drive going. He was stopped cold. Kept the leg drive going and went in and almost brought it into the end zone. But again, uh, Quincy making some hits, but the hits are sticking, and uh, North Quincy continues to move the ball. All right, second and goal to goal. LeMay left. Bilton in tight to the right. Back split behind Gray. Hand off, McNamara dives over, touchdown! Gary McNamara with the touchdown! Outstanding job all the way down there by Eddie Bagley and Kenny Kemp. Matt McNamara. Don Clancy, the entire offensive line. Mark Bilton, the entire offensive line of North Quincy Red Raiders just took control of the line of scrimmage and uh, moved the ball all the way down. Obviously some good running by the running backs too. North Quincy's going to go for the point after. High snap. 
Fought right through the uprights by John Gallagher and North Quincy's on top. 7-0 with 3.50 to go, first quarter. Again, very impressed with the offensive line on North Quincy. They've shown shades all year of being of being as good as they could be, as good as they were on that drive. They've had ups and downs all year. They started off slow, uh, basically because uh, this is the first year that either of these schools are having their players that ha didn't have the opportunity to play ball in junior high school. So they were a year, be two, a year or two behind in some of their techniques. North Quincy has been improving steadily, especially in the offensive line. And I think if this team was to start again the season now, uh, they have a much improved record over what they've done. They've really come along. Perry and Benito are back deep for Quincy. Clancy's kick, a little better this time, comes down to Perry at the 25, the 30. Trying to cut against the grain, breaks it to the outside. If he can get to the outside, tries to step inside to about the 37-yard line. As you see, Don Perry had a tiptoe around that end a little bit. If he could have used the speed that he has, I think he could have made the corner and made that a much larger gain. So there's an example of where the, the, certainly the field conditions are hurting Don Perry. He had a tiptoe. He still made a nice run out of it. But uh, if he could have used his blazing speed that he does have, uh, he could have got a lot further on that. Perry comes wide left. Anello's in a slot left. Austin pitches back. To Benito, turns the corner, is at the 35, dives forward across the 40 to about the 41 yard line. Nice tackle on the play by number 47, Mike Ainsley. Mark Porzio made a nice play, a nice block to, to get the corner for him that time, and uh, that's what not, Quincy's going to have to have is the same type of blocking. Running backs won't be able to do much on their own this time. They're going to have to have some good help from the line up front, which is always true of, uh, of uh, the running backs. They always need that help. Perry left. Full out set again behind Austin. Hand off. Second back. Porzio breaks it to the outside. Across midfield. Down to about the 46 to North Quincy. It's a first down for the president. Again, now Quincy's line's doing the same thing, controlling the line of scrimmage a little bit. I don't know whether it's weather conditions and the defense, uh, um, the offensive line knowing what the call is and when to start off the ball has a slight advantage right now, but both offensive lines are doing a good job. Pro set. Behind Austin, handoff. Porzio tries to turn the corner, does. 45, hurdles some uh, people at the 40 and is knocked out of bounds. And I guess he's going to say he went out at about the 41-yard line. Good gain on the play of about five yards. It'll bring up a second and five for the president. In motion, hand out, uh, we got whistles and flags. Now, movement against Quincy, it's gonna cost them five yards. Uh, a big five on a day like this, you're uh, any day you can't have a penalties, but uh, it's gonna be so difficult to move the ball. At least I thought it was gonna be, not Quincy didn't have too much trouble moving it, and certainly Quincy's moving it now. But the penalties are going to be costly on a day like this because every five yards is going to be tough to get. Perry comes to the left. Anello spot left, now goes in motion. And uh, Porzio breaks it through into the secondary and gets it back. Good gain on the play. About eight or nine yards. Clock counting down. About two minutes and ten seconds left. First quarter. North Quincy on top by a score of seven to nothing. 
Quincy moving the ball well, well on that right side behind Lally, the big tackle, uh, doing a good job blocking, and uh, Quincy moving the ball consistently over there. Seems like a long time in between plays here. Quarterback sneak. Well, that play takes a long time to set up, Roger. They <laughs> <laughs> he went over and talked to uh, Jackie Raymer. He comes back and jumps out in a quarterback keeper. Maybe they just used a quick snap so they didn't get the five-yard penalty for delay of game. Luisi comes in with a play. And Porzio checks out. Both teams moving the ball well on the ground with the running attacks. A uh, little bit surprising to me. I thought the defenses were going to have the advantage in this, in, in, in the, under these weather conditions. Anello comes wide left. Backs are split. Gardner in tight to the right. In motion comes Perry. Rolling out. Passing up against the green. And it's picked off. The jerseys are getting tough to read. There's a flag down, too. Picked off by Mark Bilton. And I think the penalty is going to be against North Quincy. Yeah, the flag went down, though, after the interception. So North Quincy will be penalized the yards, but they won't lose possession of the ball. Uh, a little bit surprising that Quincy threw the ball. They were moving the ball very, very well up on the ground. Uh, they have with their running ground. I think I would have stayed with that myself and uh, kept the ball on the ground and kept control of the ball. You'd be rather boring. Well, I've been called boring before. But all the years I've known you, you've always been very predictable. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> all right, North Quincy takes over on the turnover. The interception by Bilton stands. 15-yard penalty. Clip. Gray brings his team up. I set behind him. And off is Shonis. Gets into the hole and really decked on the play. Good hit. Larry Tagliera, Roger. Nice hit coming up from the uh, from the defensive backfield to make a good, strong hit there. What the uh, presidents are going to need now is a big play. I mean, certainly this game here, a good stick or fumble uh, could cause a fumble very easily. And uh, the presidents get the ball, obviously, in excellent field position. So it's a big, big series of plays for the uh, president's defense. North Quincy comes out. I set again. Hand off is the McNamara right up the shoot. Great play there. Great tackle. Big play. Brought down by Pekarski. Steve Pekarski, junior linebacker. Excellent play. The stop North Quincy. The hole was there. The linebacker filling that hole like they're supposed to do. He did the job well. And I don't know whether he learned that from his uncles or his dad, but they've all done it before also. That's the end of the quarter. After one quarter of play in this Thanksgiving Day Classic, it's the North Quincy Red Raiders 7 and Quincy nothing. Well, so far, Roger, I've been impressed with uh, both offensive lines. Uh, one quarter of play at seven to nothing North Quincy big play here Roger for the uh, for the president stop North Quincy deep in their territory third down and seven backs are split behind gray gray a little look a little confused look like a broken play and is there a fumble yes Quincy's recovered wait a minute there's a flag down on the play that was the big play, the big play that the presidents needed. And evidently, it's against Quincy. I think it was uh, Frankie Calabro forcing that, uh, forcing that tackle to force the fumble. The sophomore end coming in 
Frankie Claver with a big play, and that's what the president needs. President's needed was a big four. Whoa. Offsides against the Quincy Presidents, and uh, remember that play when the afternoon is done. Tough, tough break for the Presidents. They needed a big play die deep in the end zone. Big play by the North Quincy Red Raiders. North Quincy comes up. It's McDougal wide left. Back to an eye. Set behind Gray. Right up the gut. McNamara. Uh, check that. That might have been shown us. It's going to be tough to see the uniforms as uh, the dirt kind of blends right in with that nice red. Larry Taglier on another big hit. Him and Pekoski playing top football in the... We're having some technical difficulties. McDougal reports in with the play from the sidelines. Now he reports out. I formation set up. Chris Gray. Delay a game. I think we were down for a couple of plays there, but the Quincy defense is coming alive here. Uh, in particular, uh, Larry Tagliera and uh, Frankie Calabro and Stevie Pekoski uh, making some big hits down there and uh, holding North Quincy, certainly at this point. And, uh, geez, if it wasn't for that bad break for uh, the Presidents, they'd have the ball in excellent field position. But they seem to be coming alive, this second series of downs. Cicerone goes wide left. Now, now he shifts over. He lined up on the wrong side. Now he lines up wide on the left side. In motion goes McNamara. Back looking for Cicerone. It's complete. Up at the 35-yard line. And a lot of wide open turf. Again, another good defensive play by the president as he was brought down on the play by Mike O'Connor. Nice fake there by Chris Gray to get the linebackers to uh, to fill the holes and uh, gave the look in pass a lot more uh, a lot of room to complete it. Nice nice fake by Chris Gray to uh, open up that. Another big third down play, third and two. McDougal wide left, back setting an eye. Gray barking out the signals. Hand off, showing us. Flag is down. Up close to the first down. It's against North Quincy. Two more hits there. Again by uh, Tagliara and uh, Pekoski. Weather conditions are certainly not improving at all here. It's uh, still a steady downpour, steady rain. And I'm sure the players in the field have no idea what the weather conditions are. They're just concentrating on what they're doing. Gray comes over and confers with Coach McPhee. He comes back to the huddle along with Bill McDougal. McDougal goes wide right. Jonas now lines up in a slot left. Back split behind Gray. Fumble! And I believe Gray fell on it. As you can see, they're playing in a pile of mud right down there in the middle of the field. Um, the fumbles are going to happen. You see the players coming off the field. You look down. It's just deplorable conditions right at this time. And uh, very difficult for either offense or anybody to move the ball. I think you should be down on the field personally. Kick is up and away. Good kick. Bounces on the 45. Takes a North Quincy bounce. And it's down to about the 31 yard line. Wise move. The uh, Quincy player staying away from the ball that time. Slippery field with the mud. 
they weren't going to go anywhere and they chose to stay away from the ball. Wise move. Last time Quincy had the ball, they started to move the ball well on offense uh, on the ground. And I think they should go back to that and see if they can get a drive going here and, and tie this game up and possibly go ahead at, before the half. Anello lines up slot right. Perry in tight right. Back to split now. Anello goes in motion. Austin with the hand off to Porzio. He's met in the backfield. like Mike Haynes was one of the uh, tacklers on the play. It's really tough to see those North Quincy uniforms now that they've got mud on them. The red blends right in with the black. I think that was John Ainsley that got through the, the nose tackle that got through and made that initial hit. And a nice hit it was. Porzio split wide right. Anello slot right. Pitch out. Coming around the corners, Porzio trying to turn it across the 30, slips down at about the 33 yard line. Brought down on the play by Kenny Kemp. That's Quincy had that play well defended. Quincy comes out, it's third and 11. Flags down, and oh! Incomplete, pass was intended on the right flat for Inello. I'm glad he didn't catch it because it went for not. That would have been a great catch. A nice diving catch almost. Speaking of diving, Roger, I think we ought to give some of the, uh, the other Quincy and North Quincy athletes that have had good seasons so far some credit. And uh, Julie Killian, uh, Suburban League champion, uh, diving champion from North Quincy, had an outstanding year as a, a young athlete at North Quincy High School. Now that we brought diving up. But Julie Killian, who broke the Suburban League record as well as the North Quincy High School record in diving. And uh, congratulations to Julie. you become the Prince of Transitions here. <laughs> Full house set behind... Austin pitches it back. Perry kicks it. It's across midfield, and they're going to say he downed it. I don't. I don't. I didn't think his knee was down. Bob Alfano was slipping and sliding, you might say, to uh, pick it up. But uh, once he got it up, they said he uh, his knee touched, and that's where North Quincy will take over first and ten. As the field conditions get worse and worse, I think you're going to see um, it more and more difficult for offenses to move the ball. Uh, both offenses, uh, the first series of downs moved the ball a little bit on the ground. Both offenses, the last second series of downs, the last series of downs were pretty stopped pretty cold. And I think a lot of it has to do with the weather conditions. Cicerone comes to the left. I set. Behind Gray. And a fumble on the play, and I think Quincy's recovered. Wrong again, Roger. North Quincy recovers the ball. Shonis recovering his own fumble, and he actually got a decent gain on the play. Tough way to gain, though. It's a little iffy, that's for sure. Whatever it is. Five yard pickup, second and five. I set behind Gray. McDougal wide left. And off McNamara, across the 40, out to about the 43 yard line.
pickup of about three yards. It'll bring up third down and uh, about two, third and two. Now well, they move the marker again. Let's make it third. Oh, no, we're going to have a measurement. So it's much closer than that. Get back recognizing some of these uh, other teams that done. You have to, uh, of course, everybody in the city knows about the uh, the uh, Quincy High School volleyball team. Uh, state champions last year, runners up this year, 19 and one record. Uh, truly a, a bunch of dedicated, outstanding athletes and uh, um, everybody in the city, uh, both Quincy and North Quincy should be proud of the, the performance of those girls. From the North Quincy, uh, from the Quincy High School volleyball. As well as the North Quincy High School who had a 10 and eight record for the first time. They had a winning record in many years. A lot of sophomores and freshmen playing, and they're going to be heard from in the future, believe me. I hear they got a heck of a program over there in North. They're Chicago. building a program well. They're building some good athletes. Uh, who, who, who's the coach over there? Uh, George Winters is the freshman coach, and Gail Raftery, the JV coach. Well, certainly you can make up for a lot of flaws in your uh, head coaching position. Breaking into the secondary, it's shown us again, breaking several tackles across the 50. Down to about the 45-yard line and out of bounds. Shonis just turning and spinning, breaking several tackles. 14-yard pickup on the play. What a great running back he's turned out to be, Roger. Huh? That was uh, just pure good running all the way. Power running, spinning, moving. He did everything a good back does, and he is really coming into his own as far as the running back goes. Getting back to what we were discussing, Jim, it's, uh, it's amazing how a lot of head coaches can make up for a lot of deficiencies and faults with a good staff <laughs> behind them. North Quincy comes out. I set. The Cerrone's wide left. Hand off. McNamara flags are down. He's down, sliding to about the 45-yard line, 40-yard line. Another flag went down. And next. Evidently, uh, rain's not bothering them, fellas. Yeah, uh, both teams are coming after each other. In, uh, in a couple of instances already today, there's been a little bit of a hassle uh, after uh, the whistle is blown. And I think the officials have finally said we've had enough of this and they're starting to throw some flags out there to calm the players down because they're full of emotion. And even after the whistle, there's been a few, uh, a few little pushes and shoves and, and words exchanged. And um, this time it went against North Quincy. We've got 4.07 left, first half. North Quincy's on top, 7 to nothing. And with these conditioning, maybe very tough. And another 15 yards. Wow. I certainly should put a crimp in your drive. Yeah, I'd say in, in this weather condition, it's a long way to go for first down. Four minutes, one second left here in the first half, Roger and Jimmy, and North Quincy leading seven to nothing. Hit shown as 66 yards on 10 carries already in the ball game. Well, Jimmy, uh, fourth and about 24. What do you call uh, as a play uh, on this field? Well, I set. Fourth. All right, not fourth, third. Well, Jonas has got it. He picks up uh, about seven or eight yards on the play. Up across the North Quincy 40-yard line, out to about the 42. Well, if you give it to Shonus four times, four times six is 24, you're going to get it. <laughs> the way Shonus is running. Roger and Jimmy, along with the uh, rain, which is obviously coming down a little bit harder now, it's awfully cold out there, too. And uh, you can see the defensive and offensive lines uh, warming the hands up at every chance they get. McDougal, wide left, eye set in an eye behind Chris Gray. Pitch to Shonis, trying to turn the left corner. He's at the 40, does, 45, midfield, down to the 45 of Quincy. Oh! oh. And Shonis just <laughs> nailed some young kid on the uh, sideline. Number 53. However, the kid looks like he can play some football, I want to tell you. He bounced right back up. 
Here yeah. is not Quincy continuing to give the Shonis the ball, and they're getting that yardage back. Well, right now it's going to bring up about a third, and we'll see where they put the marker. Looks like third and about 12, we'll call it. 2.47 to go, first half. Red Raiders are on top, 7 nothing, and the further we go into this game, the more that 7 nothing is looking good. Cicerone goes wide right. LeMay's in a slot left, back setting an eye again behind Gray. Hand off, guess who? Shown it. Spins forward down to about the 40-yard line, just inside the 40, maybe to the 39. And I'll tell you, they did a heck of a job almost picking up the first down. They're going to end up about five or six yards short, but uh, they had to cover uh, about 30, 35 yards to get that first down. Big tackle that time by the, the uh, sophomore defensive end, Frankie Calabro, to make a big stop for Quincy. Not uh, Quincy thinking of going for it here. It's fourth and six, and they want to call a timeout, talk things over. So right down in front is McPhee and the offensive unit. Roger, i got to give you a lot of credit. I don't know how you can see who's playing where, when, why, or how with the uh, dirt on the back of the shirts there. You can only tell when the punting unit comes on because they have the cleanest jerseys on the field. It's probably the only time I've, I've wished for uh, substitutions. <laughs> I'll tell you though, you know, you talk about the, uh, the terrible field conditions, the terrible weather conditions, the mud and the rain on the field. Those guys are loving every second of it. They are having a ball for themselves were, down there. I guarantee you. Were you talking you that. about that, Kevin? <laughs> about loving every second of it? No, I mean, the field are, conditions. I wasn't have, talking about it. <laughs> the field conditions are horrible. I mean, everybody in the stadium has misery except those guys in the field and they're having a blast. <laughs> At this point, uh, has no phase whatsoever. It's fun now. Well, looks like Perry's back to punt. Gets it off, and looks like it's going to make it into the air. Oh, no, it died perfectly on the seven-yard line. What a kick. Chris Gray with the kick. You know, Roger, he lined up uh, in the shotgun, and I think that froze Quincy just a little bit. Just banged it off the top of his foot. All right, Quincy takes over deep in their own territory. Ball will be spotted on about the seven-yard line. And uh, some good news, the rain has seemed to pick up now. If you're a North man. Gray brings his team out. Hand off left side. Chris Benito. Not much of a gain on the play. Nice running by Benito, though, to get through there. He didn't have much of a hole, and he squeezed through to pick up about four or five. Steve Austin's going to have a tough time down here, uh, Roger and Jim. He's got to make sure he hangs on to the ball and try to wind some time down. I don't know as if Quincy can really make up some yardage with the way the field conditions are right now. In motion goes Ionello. Run left. Porzio. Gets across the 10 yard line. Check that. That's Don Perry with the ball. I think it was Chris Benito, number 27. Well, we'd get it right. There's only a couple more backs left. All of them end in seven, though, Roger. You're getting close. North Quincy taking a timeout with 120 left in the half, thinking that they can stop Quincy here, get the ball back in good field position, and maybe gamble and throw the ball up and get another score before the halftime. Pretty good thinking on North Quincy's part, I think, Roger, because uh, with the ball being deep, uh, territory is very important in the weather conditions like this, and the ball being deep in Quincy's territory. Uh, Quincy uh, North would like to play as much uh, football down this end of the field as possible. And North uh, moved the ball well their last series, too. Exactly. That big 15-yard penalty cost them, and they almost overcame it. Uh, I think they were thinking about going for it in fourth down. Uh, but they did. They moved the ball very, very well, and uh, they'd like to get the ball back with a little bit of time here. The field conditions, Roger, as you can see uh, from our camera angle a little bit, the 
uh, area that's wet has widened quite a bit here in the first half. No chance though that Marty Finnegan would just call it off and play the second half, say, Saturday or so, do you? <laughs> no way, Jose. Everybody's here, we'll gut it out now. Perry, in tight right. In motion comes on Ella, hand off Benito. And he may have gotten the first down. Nice leg drive by Benito. Picked up an extra couple of yards there. Ryan Flukes in on the tackle for North Quincy. And they did get the first down, Roger. And even though this may not be one of the uh, greatest crowds of all time, you got to hand it to the people who did show up in this type of weather. Now, there's a timeout on the field by Quincy. Minute six to go, first half. North Quincy's on top by a score of seven to nothing. Roger, unofficially, uh, the Quincy offense, uh, they have a total of about 31 yards in offense here in the first half. And for North Quincy, Ted Shonis alone has 66 yards rushing. And uh, a good indication of how North Quincy has controlled the ball game so far, uh, at least on the ground. Now, as far as passing goes, I don't think you're going to get many passes uh, uh, with the way the weather is right now. North Quincy has, I think, the only completion, and they've only thrown the one pass. So uh, that's a McNamara. No, actually, they, they have two. They had the one uh, over the middle uh, in the last drive, and then, of course, the one to McNamara that, uh, that's in right. the scoring drive. Cicerone. And that's off the top of my head. You could fit a few things on the top of that. <laughs> Including the rain. In motion goes Anello. Hand off. Trying to turn the corner, steps inside. Nice play by Porzio. And a fumble on the play. Initially that ball it was like, and loose. Yeah, initially it looked like North Quincy had it. They do. 53 seconds left on the clock here in the first half. North Quincy's recovered a fumble. There were, uh, <laughs> that ball was squirting around, and at the end of the play, there were a total of six players from both teams standing up, which means out of the 22, it was 16 to 15 to 16 guys on that pile. They're creating heat. I have a quick quiz for you. Who recovered it? <laughs> the guy in the dirty uniform. <laughs> Kevin, why don't you go down on the field and find out who recovered that for us? <laughs> I don't think they know who recovered it. North Quincy comes out. Cicerone goes wide right. Lemay's in a slot left. Eye formation set up behind Gray. Ball on the 29. A handoff. Mr. Shonis. He breaks the tackle. Inside the 25 to about the 23-yard line. And North Quincy takes a timeout. About I think uh, in Quincy's difficulty in moving the ball on offense, uh, North Quincy could get a score and go up by uh, 12 or 14 points in the first half. I think it would be very difficult for Quincy to come back. So it's imperative that Quincy holds them at this series of downs right now. Ball spotted at about the 18-yard line. Cicerone goes wide right, McDougal now, slot right. And Gray's going to run out of the shotgun. Pass to the tight end. Fake handoff. It is incomplete. Pass to the tight end. See that? It was kind of obvious coming out of the huddle. He saw the tight end for North Quincy uh, cleaning his hands. Uh, which was an indication that uh, he was going to be doing something with him, which was a catch the ball, which he obviously didn't clean him quite enough. And I, I believe the tight end is Mark Bilton. There's no way of identifying him. Wide right goes Cicerone. LeMay lines up in a slot right. Now Shonis shifts right. That's the big end of the field. McNamara goes in motion right. 
Guess what? The play's right. Shonis trying to run it to the outside. And the two super players of both clubs, Perry, comes up and makes the ta tackle on Shonis. Clock down at 29 seconds. Look at that North Quincy offensive line. There is <laughs> Eddie Bagley, Kenny Kemp. There is Wall to Wall Mark, top to bottom. I mean, they are just covered. I'll tell you, when this one's over, I'll bet you they stand under that shower for a long time. Nice. Yeah, but they're really, they're, 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 they've got plenty of insulation. they got all the pads on. They're warm. I mean, they're, they're not cold down here. They're probably the only people in the stadium that aren't cold. But uh, they've got plenty going on. They're so wrapped up into the game that, again, the elements aren't uh, bothering them. They're just having a, a grand time for themselves. Roger, just to keep you up to date, Teddy Shonis now has 92 yards running already with 29 seconds left in the first half. LeMay wide right, and I believe it's Cicerone, split left. Back setting an eye for Gray. All kinds of motion. There may have been a fumble on the play. I don't think the ball was even snapped. And they're going to call Quincy offside. Quincy pumped up, wanting to be aggressive, but they can't be aggressive until after the ball is snapped. They've made, made two or three. They, they're going to go after North Quincy, obviously, in this situation, but you can't go after them until the ball is snapped, and they've had two or three plays uh, over the course of the day, uh, offside penalties, which have been costly to them. It's going to be uh, a first down, and I'm going to try and check to see if they can pick up a first down, where they're going to put the placement of the ball. It looks like they can still pick up a first down. So it's first and ten from just outside the ten. Cicerone comes to the left. McNamara in motion. Pass over the middle. Incomplete. Well, I could identify Cicerone from the front. His uniform hadn't been dirty yet, but that takes care of that. Roger, the cleanest guy on the field is coming on right now, number two yeah, for right. North Quincy, <laughs> John Gallagher. Let's tell you a lot about John since we recognize him and we know it's him. And uh, He's uh, a heck of a nice kid. Well, I recognized uh, Jolly on that uh, last play, and he's the one who put the pressure on Chris Gray and forced him to throw that ball short. So big play by Kevin Jolly, who I recognize out there today. Okay, Gray's holding. Gallagher going to try the field goal. Here's the kick. Uh, the snap off to the right of Gray. He couldn't handle it and get it down. Just fell on it. And that should be the end of the first half. It is. One half of play is complete here on this rainy, overcast, miserable Thanksgiving day. But it's not miserable for North Quincy as they lead at halftime here by a score of 7 to nothing. How you, Welcome back to Veterans Stadium. Roger Holman, Jim Rendell, and Kevin Cahill on hand to bring you the second half of this Thanksgiving Day Classic. We're just about ready for the start of the third quarter with the Red Raiders on top by a score of 7 to nothing. Jimmy, what's Quincy going to have to do here in the uh, second half to get back in the game? Obviously try and control the ball, Roger. That's the key to it. Uh, they had one series where they started to do it. Keep the ball away from North Quincy. North Quincy, uh, when they've had the ball, has controlled it. Um, and that's going to be the key. Is uh, Just Quincy's offense is going to try and have to control the ball a little bit. Quincy will be kicking off to North. Quincy kicking left to right. How's that hot dog, Jim? <laughs> Jim, uh, with what you ate here at halftime, do you have uh, stock in the concession stand here at the Booster Club? My son went through two pairs of shoes shuttling the food up here. 
All right, we're ready. Perry kicks the ball. Fumbled. And Shonis doesn't get much of a gain on the play. Stopped at about the 26-yard line. That's where the Red Raiders will take over, first and 10. The Red Raider offense uh, is being run primarily by Ted Shonis with 92 yards rushing, as we told you. And I don't think that North is going to change their strategy. Uh, they'll keep it on the ground, go to Shonis, McNamara. And uh, every so often, but very rarely, they may try a quick slant pass over the middle. Well, Quincy comes out, and let me tell you that they did not switch uniforms, put on clean uniforms at halftime. Cicerone, wide left, handoff is to Shonen. Up to the line of scrimmage, dives forward, maybe about three yards. Roger, it looks like Ted Shonis' uniform is dirtier now <laughs> than it was when he went into the runway. I don't know, maybe they rolled around the mud at halftime, but that's North's game today. They are really getting down and getting dirty. McDougall comes wide left. I set behind Gray. Shonis, handoff, cuts it up, close to the 40-yard line. Quincy on defense, uh, doing a little too much arm tackling. Uh, with the conditions as they are, all you need is a stick or two. We've had a lot of fumbles the first half. I, I'm sure you'll have a number of fumbles in the second half. And what Quincy's defense needs is a good stick to cause that fumble. And a big play like that could uh, obviously give Quincy the, the boost that they need to come back and get uh, and score. Sets up a third and a long one. I set behind Gray. And off, guess who? Shoner. He's got the first down. He's across the 45. Out to about the 47 yard line. Nice run. Calabro in on the tackle, along with uh, Sean McDonough. Check that. Not Quincy doing very, very well, handing Shonis the ball, going to the left, the right, up the middle, wherever they want to go, and then just gaining three or four yards each time and controlling the ball, exactly what they want to do and exactly what Quincy's going to have to do to get back into it. I said again behind Gray. Hand off McNamara. Just over the line of scrimmage. Pick up maybe one or two yards. There's a Quincy player right down in front of us. I have no idea who he is. No idea. Hope he doesn't make too many tackles. <laughs> There's a big stick on that play, and I, Roger, I couldn't see who made it. Uh, big play by North Quincy, uh, by, by Quincy's defense to stop uh, McNamara that time, and Quincy needs another big play, big, big defensive play here. Cicerone comes wide left, back setting an eye. Pitch to Shonis, cuts it up. Midfield, 45, 40, 35, Jonas to the outside, 30, 25, 20, and brought down by Donnie Perry at the six-yard line. What a run, Teddy Jonas. Forty-yard run for Jonas, puts him well over 100 yards and well over 1,000 yards for the season. Jonas made the play on the cutback. Cut back Quincy defenders in pursuit, unable to uh, cut back with him because of the weather conditions. Shona showing great balance and agility being able to make that cut back in these weather conditions and picking up the big game. Well, he spot the ball at the 10-yard line. So we'll call it first and 10 at the uh, 10. And uh, Shona up close to the 5. Roger, Teddy shown us now unofficially at 153 yards rushing on the day, and that puts him uh, over the 1,000-yard mark for the season, and he only started for North Quincy in the third game of the season. So you can see what a uh, productive offensive weapon he is for North Quincy. It's just a fine run. Every time he gets the ball, he gets four or five yards. Give some credit to that North Quincy offensive line, too, for leading the way for him. They've really come on over the course of the year. Backs at an eye behind Gray. Second down, eight. Fumble on the snap. Quincy's recovered. Recovering the Steve ball McCarthy. for Quincy. Bukarski, Johnny on a spot. Is uh, Gray never had it on the snap. 
and he tried to jump back to dive on it and his feet went right out from underneath him. He was a yard short. Pekarski then dove on it. So big break here for Quincy is uh, they stopped north when it looked like uh, they were going to score. North Quincy. Uh, Quincy needed the big defensive play and they came up with it out of Steve Pekarski. Keep them into the game. And uh, wind seems to be picking up a little bit as the rain starts to sheet across the field. Man in motion, handoff, Porzio. Breaks it up to the left side. He's across the 10, the 15, off to the 20 yard line. Mike Porzio running very well and real strong. I think they're going to give him the ball a few more times. That was Venito. Sorry, Jimmy. My fault. Seven sixteen to go, third quarter. North Quincy's on top. Perry comes wide right. Ionello slot right. Hand off right up the middle. Benito. Short. Big hit there by John Ainsley, playing that middle. Big hit by John Ainsley. Stop Benito shot. Pick up a four yards on the play. It'll bring up a second and six. Ionello, slot right. Perry in tight to right. Now Ionello in motion. Fumble and picking it up uh, with Austin as he put his knee down to pick the ball up. That'll basically kill the play. Clock's gone down to six minutes left here in the third quarter. So I say that the uh, weather conditions haven't diminished the amount of hitting going on down there. Uh, this rivalry is as intense as any game we've seen. Certainly, uh, Jimmy, you can elaborate on that, though. Uh, these lines are really going at each other. Perry to the right. In motion comes Anello. Back to pass. Austin looking down against the green. It's knocked down. Nice defensive play by North Quincy's John Ainsley. Austin, again, because of the footing, wasn't able to stop and set up and throw the ball like we'd like to have. Good defensive coverage by Bubba Haynes on that. Fourth and seven for the Presidents. They're going to be forced to punt. McDougal is back about 20 yards and back deep is Cicerone. Perry in punt formation. Gets the pitch from Austin. The line drive kick. Alfano picks it up at about the 47. Cross midfield, and there he is. Just belted by Ricky Smith. Yeah, Kevin, uh, as you were saying earlier about the, uh, the hitting on the field, both teams going at each other. They know each other well, and they're hitting well. And the other thing is, despite the records that both Mark Quincy and Quincy have, both of them have some fine athletes out there. And uh, when you have these athletes that have quality uh, playing with your emotions, they, uh, they're going to come up with some big plays and some big flops, and we've seen a few good ones today. You know, you know the thing, Jim, that uh, is striking when you look over the lineup is that there's so many sophomores and juniors and even freshmen out there, and, and these kids, they're, you know, they're playing, and some of these kids are playing their first Thanksgiving Day game, and they have a few more that they'll be playing. So these kids are going to see each other, a lot of them, for the next couple of years. This is uh, certainly a rivalry which needs no introduction, but uh, if these kids play against each other for two, three years in a row, it just gets more intense every year. Oh yeah, it certainly does. And like you say, they know each other so well because a lot of them play Legion ball together. They participate in different programs around the city together, so they know each other uh, very well, and um, that adds to the rivalry. 
and we have our first uh, injury on the field today. Surprisingly so, uh, only one, uh, the only one of the day with the weather conditions the way they are. It's a Quincy player, I believe, it's now. One thing we should note also here is that uh, despite the weather conditions, which are probably, I think they're the worst I've ever seen for a Thanksgiving Day game, there isn't a bad crowd out here. Certainly not the type of crowd we're used to seeing, but, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it isn't bad considering everybody's standing in freezing rain. And as always, the concession stand is doing a good, uh, good business. With Jim Rendell around, it always does a good business. Doing a good business before Jim got here. Doing a banner business now. I think they could fund the entire uh, football program with what he ate at halftime. I think he thought that was his Thanksgiving Day dinner. You guys done yet? <laughs> having a oh, no. time here, huh? You we have a hot dog and you guys are all over me. A hot dog? <laughs> That's what you call it? Well, maybe a couple. The stock and Oscar Meyer went up three points. All right, North Quincy comes out. One ball lined right up on the 50-yard line. In motion, and it's a reverse, and I'll tell you, Quincy had that smelled out right from the gun. And I can't even, he's running towards me, I still can't see his number. Roger, Kenny Southwick was the uh, young man for Quincy High that came in there and uh, made such a fine play. Uh, he was across that line, smelled the play out uh, easily. Bradley's the one who ran it for North Quincy. He came back on an end reverse. And uh, he's the one that uh, got the formal introduction to Mr. Southwick. High formation set up behind Gray. And maybe they're calling an audible with the line here. I don't know. Gray went back and told McNamara. McNamara turned around and told Shonis. Now it's pitched to Shonis. He tries to cut it inside. That was the play that got the big gainer for him. And they are just flopping around in the mud now. Ball is about a 46-yard line. Again, Selfrick on the stop, and Larry Tagliari coming up from his defensive back uh, position, number 12 for Quincy, to stop Shonis. I think the defense, is, uh, if they were smart, is just going to key right on Shonis. There's no doubt about it. He's going to get the ball most of the time for Norris. Well, uh, Quincy's uh, defense right now is really picking up the life. Uh, uh, Frankie Calabro made a good play that time to contain the inside. The previous play on that, uh, Southwick was on a blitz, blitzing right into the double reverse. Do not Quincy for the loss. Uh, Quincy's uh, defense certainly coming to life now. I set behind Gray. Fumble. Picked up by Gray. And then really hammered again by Pekarski. Gray fumbled the ball and was going to roll right, obviously with the intention to pitch to Shonis, but before he had that opportunity, Mr. Pekarski greeted him. The other problem is right now, Roger, they're in the center of the field. The center of the field is obviously the worst condition, so for either offense to run the ball a little bit in the center of the field it was, is uh, close to impossible to get anything going. What they've got to do is they've got to use the sidelines and hopefully to get to... Uh, one end of the field or the other, but when you're in the center like that, it's real difficult. Cicerone. Oh, it's blocked! Quincy blocks the ball! And recovers. Blocking the punt was Kevin Jolly. And recovering it, number 81, Frank Calabro. We saw that last year. Frank Calabro uh, in on a punt, uh, a blocked punt, and uh, nothing new. This year on Thanksgiving, same type of thing. Boy, did they get in there on gray, though, this time. What a memory this guy's got, huh? Exactly. It wasn't Frank, though, last year. Frank's just a sophomore. That was his cousin. <laughs> Wrong, Kevin. Same family. <laughs> All right, Quincy with a big opportunity here. And the sky's darkened, if that's possible, even more. Split back. Hand off. Benito. Chugging forward. Still on his feet. Fumble. Pick up of six yards on the play. I'll bring up a second and four. Here again, Quincy's defense playing a good, solid defense the last time. Coming up with the big plays to stop North Quincy. Then the big block punt, giving the momentum, taking it away from North Quincy this half or this quarter, and giving it to the Quincy offense who's got the momentum and is certainly starting to move the ball. Wow. 
John Monroe checks in. I can see his number. Back to split. Hand off. Right side into the secondary. Diving forward. Porzio at Quincy. Really seems to be pumped up now. And another thing you pointed out a few moments ago, Jimmy. They've now got the ball out of the mid part of the field. They got down where, if there is such a thing as traction, at least they can get it here in the mid part of the field. It's nothing but muck and mud. And there's absolutely no, no traction. Especially for the back to make the big, big difference for the back to get the, we have to hit the hole at full speed to hit the, uh, the line of scrimmage uh, with full speed going rather than tiptoeing into it. Uh, much easier to break tackles and get the gain of the odds that you need. Ball spotted on the 22. Back to split behind Austin. Hand off, Benito, across the 20, down to about the 18. Four yard pickup on the play. We talked about Chris Benito, Roger, and Jim, but uh, on the play previous to this one, did you see the block he laid on, uh, on one of the North Quincy defenders? That freed Corzio so he could pick up the uh, 10 yard gain. So Benito is doing it on the ground, uh, rushing, and he's also doing it blocking. And that's, uh, that's Quincy Forte. They get Anello and Benito out there blocking, and Porzio also blocks. All of them, uh, number 27, 37, and 47. Kind of like a vowel club. Back split behind Austin. Second down, about six. Ball spot on the 18. His pitch left to Benito. Bringing it out to North Quincy. Benito tucks it in, dives both to the 15. Clock counting down, just about a minute to go here, third quarter. And that time it was Mark Porzio that laid the block to free Chris Benito. So these guys are helping each other out there, no doubt about it. Couple yard pickup, it'll bring up third and four. Presidents come out. Almost. Back split again behind Austin. In motion comes Anello. Hand up. Luis to try to turn the corner. Man falls down. He's at the 10. Dying forward down to about the 8 or 7 yard line. And the Presidents continue to drive the ball. Boy, I'll tell you, there's some good hitting going on out there on both sides of the ball. <laughs> some of these guys are their footing as bad as it is. I just slugging it out with the guy across the line of scrimmage and they're going after each other on both sides of the ball. First and goal at about the eight and this is gonna be the last play. They're not gonna get it off. That's the end of the third quarter of play. The score after three quarters of play on this Thanksgiving morning is North Quincy 7 and Quincy 0. Here come the president's pitch. Right side, Venito. Oh, and he's met there by several North Quincy tacklers. All right, clock counting down. The final 11 minutes of play. Backs a split behind Austin. Hand off Benito. Gets dives to the five yard line. North Quincy right there to greet him again at the line of scrimmage. Matt McNamara leading his attack for the Red Raiders. North Quincy playing fired up defense, making a couple of good sticks, and I can't get the numbers down there. We can't see a thing, Roger, as far as the numbers go. But they are making some awesome plays down there on defense to stop the Quincy offense that has really uh, got the mo uh, had the momentum going.
Backs are split, Rain belting down. In motion goes Ionello. Hand off, Porzio trying to turn the corner. Ducks it inside, touchdown, Quincy! Porzio with a great move. It looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Broke the tackle and just ran it in for the final five yards to put this game within one point. This puts a little pressure on uh, Jackie Raymer. Jimmy, does he go for two to try and win it, or does he go for one and tie it up? No, no, Jackie doesn't want to kiss his sister here. He wants to win the game, and they're going to go for the two. I don't think there's any doubt about it. They're going to tie, call a timeout here and think about what play they want to run. But uh, they didn't come do down here their whole season. Rides on, uh, rides on this game, basically, and uh, they're coming here for the win, and uh, they don't want anything other than. So I think they're definitely going for the two here. Porzio made a nice run, Roger. He saw that. He saw the hole in the line there, uh, broke through it, that's underneath the tackler. He saw the end zone, and he wanted it, and uh, uh, you could just see the acceleration in him as soon as he saw that hole open up, and uh, he saw that end zone, and he wanted it badly, and he got it. I'll tell you, uh, Jim, there's plenty of time left. Nine minutes, 27 seconds. I would, uh, I, get, I think you're right. I think you'd like to go for two, but it wouldn't be a bad idea just to get the one. There's lots of time left, and uh, Quincy can certainly get the ball back. Maybe you could kiss your sister later. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think Jim Rendell may be right. Two-point conversion as Quincy comes up. Austin with the pitch. Right side, trying to get it to Benito. They don't make it. North Quincy Hall. In case you can't tell, we're on the North Quincy side of the field. Excellent defensive play by the Red Raiders. They have held the president, but it's still got to instill a lot of life in Quincy here uh, with that big punt block and then uh, bringing it down and in to have a chance at least to tie it they went for the two points and you got to hand it to Jackie Raymer he had the uh, uh, like you said wanted to put the two points up and get on top and force North Quincy uh, to either put the ball up or do some things they really don't want to do at this point exactly right big play by Gary McNamara then the outside uh, the defensive end um, playing like a Seth's man here he was not going to be denied as far as uh, letting anybody score on his side and uh, came up, met the blocker head on, stopped the blocker, and then made the hit. Uh, great play there, and it's a big play. The play of the game right now by Gary McNamara. Well, uh, Jim, they tried the same play that they scored the touchdown on, but uh, that line, and I believe it was Kenny Kemp, was over on that side, just shifted a little bit more to the left side, and also uh, the defensive backs came up very, very quickly as soon as Benito got the ball. Uh, good, uh, good pursuit by the North Quincy defense, but again, if it worked once, why not uh, try it again on the two-point conversion? Nine twenty-seven to go in the ball game. North Quincy still on top, now by a score of seven to six. Spencer kicks. Almost it. And the special teams, good to see some uh, fresh numbers in there. These guys are covered with mud. Amazing. That's why you're the color man. <laughs> okay, now uh, game's right here pretty much. Not Quincy wanting to control the ball here. If they're able to do so, they'll be able to put this game away. Back setting an eye. Behind Gray. And off Shonis. Trying to turn. He slips and falls. Not much of a gain on the play. We'll bring up a second and ten.
McDougal goes wide left. The Mesa slot right back to setting an eye again behind Gray. Hand off again. Jonas tries to dive at the line of scrimmage. Gets across the 40. Just across. Going to bring up a third and about uh, eight for North Quincy. And if Quincy holds here, they get the ball back, obviously, with plenty of time. Cicerone comes to the right, backs again in an eye. He's set behind Gray. This is that North Quincy usually runs out of. Jonas, pitch, turns the corner, 45, dives forward up to about the 47. I think he's going to be about a yard short of the first down. be the placement by the official that gives him the first down and right. It was the spinning move by Jonas that made it even close. He spun away and got the extra yard or two and it's going to bring it awful close. Uh, fourth and about one. Right now we have Teddy Jonas unofficially 24 carries, 166 yards in the swap. <laughs> right smack in the middle of the field where it's difficult to run the ball to here. They're going to punt the ball. I think it's a wise choice on Kenny McPhee's part. It's just too much of a too much of a factor is the field conditions to run, even though it's short yardage. But to to get that extra yard, the back just can't get the the uh, traction he needs to get the uh, speed up to hit the hole and make the yard. Gray's in the punt. Anello and Benito are back deep for Quincy. And we're going to have a penalty. Delay a game. So fourth and one turns to fourth and six. We should note right here that uh, both teams have been pretty well penalty free throughout the game, Roger. There hasn't been that many penalties. And uh, that's amazing when you think about it with the weather. Quincy going for the block again, I think. Here they come. Gray gets this one off. North downs it deep in Quincy territory. Smart move by Ionello and Benito to get away from that ball. Uh, Quincy defense doing the job. They held North Quincy. They got the, the they got the ball for the offense, even though it's deep in their territory. They did what they had to do. They stopped North from controlling the ball, and now it's up to the offense to get them back into the game. Well, they're going to take over, it looks like, on the 20-yard line. So that's where we'll start this drive with 6.48 remaining here in the football game. North Quincy's on top by a score of 7-6. Hand off right up the middle. Not much gain right there to meet him is North Quincy. Benito, no gain on the play. It'll bring up a second and ten. Roger, it's just useless to try to see who's in on these tackles for uh, North Quincy. We can't see the we, we can't see the numbers. We certainly found a good role for you then. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, handoff, turn, spin. Benito again. Well, Kevin McCarthy and Matt McNamara were in on that tackle. We did watch him that time, Rod. You don't want to get stereotyped, Kevin. <laughs> Both John Ainsley, too, making a big hit there. And uh, North Quincy defense obviously fired up, realizing that it's uh, their turn to... Third and nine. Real tough to move the field. Uh, move the ball down the field, folks. In motion, Dianello. Austin back to pass, looking right, looking downfield, it's caught, I don't know if it was out of bounds, yes, out of bounds, no good. I think it was Ionello who came up with the catch, but he caught it out of bounds, and that would have been real close to a first down, in fact it would have been a first down for Quincy, and that's going to bring up fourth and nine, with the clock now stopped, five minutes, 24 seconds to go here in the football game. 
I just wanted to mention, I didn't see Don Terry out there, number 17, and uh, I don't see him on the sidelines either, Roger. I'm wondering if he was the uh, Quincy player that was taken off. I don't see him anywhere, and he's a big threat for Quincy. Fourth and nine. There's the pitch, and he's not punting, so I think you're right, Kevin. And the ball actually hit uh, number 68, uh, Ricky Smith. Uh, he was blocking downfield. I don't think the official saw it because uh, North Bend is going to get the ball at the 46. Uh, right, probably the worst part of the field that they could have taken it over. Yeah, Roger, you're right. I'm awful concerned about Don Perry, just an outstanding athlete. I know he was one of the big, uh, I hope his serious injury isn't serious because he's such a good athlete and I know they were counting on him for the Quincy High basketball program also. Cicerone wide right, back setting an eye behind Gray, handoff is to Shonis and he's really popped. That was Chris Benito, number 27, that came up to uh, pop Shonis on that play. Gonna call a gain of one. Second down, nine. Clock counting down to four minutes, 50 seconds remaining. North Quincy hanging on to a 7-6 lead. McDougal, wide right. Backs again, setting an eye. Now there's a fumble. And I think Gray fell on it. And we got a North Quincy player injured down there. I don't see anybody around him. I didn't see who that was, Roger, but... Uh, he got a cramp. Yeah, he got a cramp. That's why they're working on the leg right there. Yeah, there wasn't a pull around him. Pulled a hamstring. Look what he is laying, and you got a good camera shot there. Look at the, It looks like a bronze yeah, statue. That black the thing camera. down there with a red helmet on it, that, that's the injured player there. That black pile of mud. Oh. I hope it's not, a, again, serious. Um, oh, by the way, they're working on his leg, Jimmy. I'm sure it's a cramp. Yeah. Especially the way he was writhing in pain. I think, you know, he just went to make a cut or something and, and went his, uh... I think uh, we should give a salute to all the people who uh, made it out here to the game today, the, uh, the fans. My, my goodness, there's some people out there without umbrellas and without uh, hats or, or hoods, and uh, they're standing here, they're staying for the game. I mean, it's a 7-6 ball game, a very exciting football game, and there's it's just the, the fans haven't left yet, so we're here in a nice warm booth. We have the yeah. uh, portable heaters nice and uh, warm, yeah. the coffee service and everything, but those people are just standing out there in the freezing rain. By the way, Kevin, would you send Ginger in with a new pot of coffee? <laughs> uh, Kevin, I think it's only fitting at this time that uh, we have our color man uh, describe the many colors that we have in the stand. I see some blues and some oranges. How about you, Jim? I see a lot of brown mud. <laughs> I think that's Eddie Bagley, the offensive guard. I'm almost sure it is. Uh, excellent job he's done over the course of the year for North Quincy, and I hate to see him end his career right at North Quincy like this. The senior guard, Eddie Bagley, after an excellent game. Back set and I. And off Shonis. Oh, and dies forward. And as you can see, they're just slipping and sliding after each play. Replacing Bagley now at uh, right guard is Tommy Dolan. That's going to set up a fourth and 11. The clock counting down. Three minutes, 40 seconds to go in the football game. High snap. Oh, it's a low punt. Oh. 
North Quincy falls on it. Quincy will have the ball with three minutes, 16 seconds to go. Did you see number 84, Kevin Segella for North Quincy? He was running down, trying to down the punt. He slipped on about the 40-yard uh, line and just slid all the way down about 10 yards. Looks like he was sliding into home plate. There is absolutely no footing right now out in the middle of that field. And that uh, makes a big factor in the game. I think uh, Quincy unable is going to have a very difficult time moving the ball, certainly in the middle of the field. They're going to have to try and break somebody loose towards the sidelines. The sidelines is the only spot there's any footing whatsoever. So I think in order for Quincy to move the ball, they're going to have to try and run around the ends and get somebody on the sidelines where they can get some footing. Quincy comes out. This is basically uh, about their last effort, uh, barring a uh, major turnover. And off turn in the corner, up the right side is Porzio. Up across the 30, the 35. Pick up a six yards on the play. That said, the uh, the game, the ball is in the uh, Quincy offensive, uh, Quincy's offensive hands, and it's up to them how the turnout is going to be at this point. They can do the job; they'll have the opportunity to win the game. I know, in motion, handoff. Nice defensive play. That was number 20. The uh, senior co-captain, Rob Bradley, came blasting in that right side. There may not be much footing, but he had uh, he had the footing right there on that play. Quincy takes a timeout. Big, big play here for them. Ball loss of two on the play. Sets up a third and five. Ball spotted just shy of the 35-yard line difficult choice for Jackie Raymer. He doesn't know what his offense is capable of doing. They're right in the middle of the mud pile. Um, makes the footing tough. He probably wants to throw the ball. Awful tough for Steve Austin to get out and throw the ball. If he is going to throw the ball, I'm sure he's going to roll out to the left or the right where he has the opportunity to stop and throw the ball a little bit because he just has absolutely no footing in the middle of that field to plant his foot and deliver the ball. The uh, guy that he normally goes to, of course, is Don Perry, but uh, Don is not out there. Sean Monroe, you might want to look for him, or Steve Gardner. Both those guys have been uh, targets for Austin throughout the season. Number 86 is Gardner, number 82 is Monroe. Monroe comes to the left. Arnello, wide right. Back split. Back goes Austin, trying to throw right, he's got a man! It's complete on the right sideline to Venino! He's across midfield, down to the 45-yard line! Great. And that ought to pop Quincy up. Great call by Jackie Raymer. I don't know where he came up with it, but I'm sure he's been saving it. He got, he got the linebacker, uh, he got the back out of the backfield free on the right-hand side, down the sideline. And uh, Austin, who had trouble with the footing, did deliver the ball right on the numbers and a big play and a great call by Jack Raymond to come up with that play 21 yard pickup on the play from the 35 to the 44 of North Quincy back split Anello in motion handoff Porzio hurdles the pile at the line of scrimmage dives forward down to about the 40 clock counting down to a minute and 50 and we're going to have to have a timeout timeout Quincy well, time is certainly the factor now, Roger. One minute, 51 seconds left, and Quincy on the move. This is definitely the last drive of the game. Without Perry, without Perry, uh, it's going to be a little difficult for, uh, for Austin to try to hit his men. But Benito on that play, that 21-yard play, was wide open on the right-hand side. There wasn't anyone near him. And now Quincy also is starting to get into uh, the better part of the field. If there is one. <laughs> Certainly better than where it is at midfield. So it's second and five for the Presidents. By the way, I think they're going to be having a big mud wrestling contest after the ball game, Roger. You might want to stick around for that. <laughs> the conditions seem perfect for it. If I had a 50-yard line seat for it, I wouldn't stick around. Ionello comes to the left. Monroe in tight to the right. Now... Going left is Porzio. Here comes Austin. And he's in hot pursuit. Trying to break into the outside, but North Quincy. 
hems him in and dumps him for a loss. Mike Ainsley on the tackle there, Roger. Ainsley was uh, pursuing him to the left, knew he wouldn't be able to turn and throw, and just came up and blasted him. There were three other North Quincy players just chasing uh, Austin to the sideline that time. Austin looking for the quick pass over the middle to the tight end. North Quincy defense doing an excellent job and not letting, allowing the tight end to get off the line. Austin then looked. His receiver was covered, nowhere to go with it. He had to run the ball around the end. Big play by North Quincy's defense. Well, lost on the play of three yards. It's going to set up a third and eight with a minute and 28 remaining. Quincy's taking a timeout. Brain Trest is over, huddling with Coach Jackie Raymer. I think on that last play, Roger, that was the, uh, the slant pattern that's worked so well for the Presidents this year. He may have been looking for Gardner or Monroe just on a quick slant uh, to open up the middle of the, the uh, field there. An another thing with uh, Austin rolling left, I think he felt that with the pursuit coming, he couldn't stop or couldn't get it to his right hand to get the pass off. So he was trying to like out, outrun the pursuit so that he could get a pass off. He was afraid of a fumble, which in the long run might have been a very smart play. And although Steve's a fine quarterback, he is not the most mobile uh, individual out there on the field. He does remind me a lot of Jimmy Rendell. All right, big play, third and eight, set up for the presidents. Anello in motion. Handoff, Benito did not get it. It's going to bring up fourth and about six. Clock counting. I think there's only one more timeout for Quincy. Big play here called by Jackie Raymer. I think uh, North Quincy's uh, defense definitely going to be aggressive. If he could take advantage of that and... Uh, uh, run some side of a uh, fake and a uh, shot pass. Here it is. Here's the ball game, folks. Fourth and five. Inello in motion. Austin back to pass. He's got Inello on the right flat. He can't get it to him. Inello with the cut back and his feet gave out. North Quincy takes over on down. Austin again trying to throw the ball from the middle of the field unable to stop plant the ball and deliver the ball the way he's capable and the way he would like to so again the field positions making a big uh, uh, having a big part in that play Austin unable to deliver the ball uh, because of the field conditions and what a shame too because he had Ionello wide open on that right side and if Steve could have got the ball over there uh, they would have had the first down and maybe uh, a little bit more uh, certainly the first down, though, just to keep the drive going. But what a shame for the president. Zionello wide open. you got to put credit both schools, though. Excellent football game considering the conditions and everything else. Um, it came down to the last 43 seconds before the game was really decided. And uh, even still, with these weather conditions, with a good hit somewhere along the line, um, we may be able to see a fumble yet. And the presidents aren't really out of it. Well, Kenny McPhee is on the threshold of his first uh, Thanksgiving Day football win, and I'm sure right now he's, uh, he just wants to make sure he keeps it in the bag. While we have this opportunity, While we have this opportunity with the timeout, uh, we want to thank all the uh, cameramen, assistants, uh, producers, directors, everybody for standing up in the rain and uh, bringing this game to you because uh, it's cold up here for us, but we're not out in the rain. They got it a lot tougher than we do, and... Uh, a lot of equipment problems. We uh, ask you to bear with us in some of those. Uh, we still we have one camera up right now. I want to thank Roger Homan Jr. for doing the statistics for us. And uh, a lot of credits will be rolled at the end of the football game. A lot of people it took to uh, bring you this football game. All right, North Quincy, I believe, only has to run one. Well, they'll have to run two plays now. Is Quincy will stop the clock. Well, the officials stopped the clock. Now, timeout, Quincy. And I think that's their last timeout. Jimmy, Kevin, pleasure working with you again one, one more time this year. Uh, well, thank you very much, Roger. I, just to add to what you were saying before, I want to thank uh, uh, Bob Brennan and uh, Danny Santry, George Santry. Uh, let me see, who else we got? Edna Solander, yeah. Dale, Solander Dale Solander, Keith Nickerson. Uh, what's that? Carl Schwendeman. Carl Schwendeman. Uh, who was up on the roof today? 
that crazy guy Bob Purcell does that wacky trivia show. Uh, the entire crew, the, everybody just did a fine job, and uh, uh, all year long, it's been uh, it's been one of those weird years because of the schedule, but certainly a lot of fun working with you guys. Well, it was uh, certainly with your uh, uh, social schedule, it was tough to get you at the same time that they happen to be playing football. It's worse every year. Another snap. Pile of mud. Wait a minute. Whoa. Wait a minute. Quincy's pointing. They got the ball. And you can tell by that picture, nobody really knows what's going on. Except the guy at the bottom. <laughs> Guess who gets off the bottom? Well, we also got to be coming up with a uh, player of the game here. And I don't think there's any question in my mind, uh, Mr. Shonis gets my vote. Absolutely. Uh, Ted Shonis, we had him uh, unofficially for 27 carries, 166 yards, and that's uh, amazing in this weather, especially that big run he had, though, uh, that really broke, uh, he broke a big run down towards the, uh, the goal line. North Quincy didn't score on that play, but just the same, he, he kept the North Quincy offense going all day long. On the Quincy side, though, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of good players also. The defense really really did well today. They had been much maligned, but I think they played a great game. Well, that's it. The final. Oh, wait a minute. Now the whistle blows to lay a game against North Quincy. But North Quincy's going to win this battle by a score of 7-6. And that'll 27-22 uh, with four ties. And my hat's out to Jackie Ringler for going for that two-point conversion, too. That's right, Jimmy Rendell called it. There's uh, a lot of guts to go for two points at that uh, point in the ballgame. But, hey, these guys are here to win, no doubt about it. And now, uh, let me see, the Raymer uh, McPhee tandem, they'll each be one and one against each other. With one tie. And well, no, Raymer wasn't here the uh, tie. That's right. Let's run down the scoring for you where we got this opportunity with 3.50 to go in the first quarter. A one-yard plunge by Gary McNamara put North Quincy on top by a score of 6 nothing. John Gallagher's point after touchdown made it 7-0. And here in the fourth quarter, a five-yard run by Mark Porzio at 9.27 to go made it 7-6. The two-point conversion was no good, and that's the margin of difference right now. Here's the final snap. The 1985 football season for the Quincy Presidents and the North Quincy Red Raiders. The North Quincy Red Raiders win this one by a score of 7-6. Jimmy, your final thoughts. Uh, give both teams a lot of credit. Uh, horrible field conditions, excellent football game considering all, all that we had to go through with the field conditions. Uh, and what I liked about it, it was it wasn't over until the final gun. I mean, Quincy was in there fighting all the way. North Quincy comes out with a well-deserved victory. Uh, but again, as usual, uh, excellent football game for Thanksgiving. Kevin? Well, again, uh, uh, just to reiterate what Jimmy says, uh, Thanksgiving Day football, always a tough, tough game for both teams. Congratulations to the seniors on both squads. They both uh, they both had something to be proud of today. And congratulations to the North Quincy Red Raiders. And, hey, there's always next year. You just never know. Thank you very much. For Jimmy Rendell, Kevin Cahill, I'm Roger Holman. Once again, the final score here on Thanksgiving Day at Veterans Memorial Stadium, North Quincy Red Raiders 7, the Quincy Presidents 6. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>